Did millennials ruin dating for Gen Z and beyond? Let's talk about it. She ain't no diva. Or I'm used to girls walking up to me. Hmm. Insane. But what uh, happened to your insane. natural? What happened to your natural instinct? Is that gone now? Look at me. All the energy in the world. <laughs> My baby looking too good, yeah, she perfect. No, she worth it. When she pull up, all them man, them flirting. And yeah, she know that she a dime. Call up on my line. Told her, baby, bring it one time. Yeah. Girl, sit down and relax. Girl, let me put it on you, no time for chit chat. Because she moved like a queen. And I- New York in the house. house. New- <laughs> Sacramento in the house. house. Chicago in the house. What? London in the house. Come on. Japan are you in the house. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of it. Oh, are we all on silent? Yeah. Baby, come on. Baby, baby come, come on. on. Baby, we... come on. Oh, when you oh, fly every night. Looking through the thick at night. I just kind of think in the night. And then to all fall into you. Oh, I'm kind of think to do. And I think it's just in the night. See? See? Oh, man, I need a song. I'm in the background. It's hot in here, man. <laughs> Today we decided to wear cardigans. Yeah. And it's hot, but um let's do the professional stuff. You already know what it is. Let me roll should I roll up a young sleeve? Should I give them like nano two on oh? I'll give it to them. We're giving them nano two on oh. Let's get it. Oh, let me check because I'll roll up the sleeves, yeah. And I'll watch it and I'll be like, why the hell did I decide to roll up the damn sleeves? And, uh, the sleeves rolled up look kinda cute. I don't know. Sweet. Rolled up look how they look to you. I like it. It looks cool. You uh-huh. like it? I like it. If you like it, I love it, babe. Let's go. All right, let's go. <clears throat> let's go. Yo, what's really good though? It's a girl, yes, yes, sir. And um, that's not how it is. She, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I didn't give you any warning. It's a girl, yes, yes, sir. I've got. You see me, yeah. Mm. She the real MVP. I'm done. We got she in the building, <laughs> guest hosting today. Yo, what's yes. good? Because uh, we're talking up the things, and if you know, we when we're talking up the things. We got to talk up the things properly. Yes, sir. Um, if you haven't yet, we have hit our goal of a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. <sighs> come on now, come on. Um, the only thing is, I watch hours. So if there's episodes you haven't watched, we've almost got a hundred episodes. Just go back, watch the episodes. You'll love it. But one thing you got to do is make sure you make yourself a cuppa. Yes. Sir. Look at this hey sis mugs. I'm going to oh. put the link down below in the description box where you can actually get yourself some. Um, What else have we got going on? I'll put a pink on it. We've hit another target. I wanted 10,000 followers on TikTok. I've got 14,000 followers. On. Glory be to hallelujah God. We, we, thank, we thank God. Glory, glory, gala, God. glory. Um, The goal, the last goal before we reach the mountaintop. Come on now. It's 10,000 followers on Instagram. We are on 9,000 plus and we're almost Ooh, there. I wait. can feel, I can see. The summit's coming now. Oh, yeah, the promised land. I can um, almost see mm, it. Almost see that it. And that's dream up to I'm you. Reaching. There's a voice inside my head saying, I'm finna reach it. <laughs> it's not, I won't. Every risk I'm taking, <laughs> every move I'm making, lost with no direction. <laughs> 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 we're, over, we're almost there okay we're almost there as she said we are almost there Come and um, you can get there by you if you're already subscribing share one of our videos or mm-hmm. reels to someone and they'll be like oh my god they're a vibe I should be following them pow you know what I'm saying help us with the climb Come on now. And you know, we are on Spotify as well. Follow us on Spotify so you are alerted to all the episodes. And you know your girl's got an audio telenovela going on. Yes, my book, <laughs> Hey, I'm the Big Sis You Never Had, is out right now. New episodes dropping every week. It's literally a soap opera in your ear. So you could be up on the train, mm-hmm. squashed like it's a tuna can. <laughs> Squat. So With that in your ear, you can be in a good mood. I think I've said it all. With yeah. that being said, let's get stuck into the episode, man. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, wait for the headline now, did millennials ruin dating for Gen Z and beyond? Let's talk about it. That's a strong allegation to put on a whole group of people. I mean, we're just going to throw some allegedly's, allegedly's, allegedly's okay. in there. Because it's not an allegation, it's a statement of fact. And the reason why I said a this... fact? Capital F. Okay, go on. It's a fact. Okay. Educate it's an opinion me. of what I think is a fact because... Mm-hmm. 
You know me, I'm going to do my research now. So Why not? <laughs> research is there. Oops, so I'm yeah. thinking, okay, let's break down millennials because there's going to be people, yeah? Insulting. No, you can do, you can put it back up while yeah, I speak. Your thing. <laughs> if it's the audio, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. So basically, I did my research because millennials, if you didn't know, they're the age range, yeah? They would have had to have been born between 1981 mm-hmm. and 1996 yes. to be a millennial. Now, let's look at some of the top dating apps right now. Mm-hmm. The creator of Tinder. Mm-hmm. Sean Rad is 37. The creator of Hinge is Justin McLeod at 39. And the creator of Bumble is Whitney Wolf Heard at 34. Okay. Now you got to think to yourself, yeah, a lot of Gen Zs are talking about how the streets are trash. There's no one out there right now. Mm. And a lot of them used to subscribe to dating apps. They've given up on dating apps. And now there's the same people that don't even know how to date. Okay. How many Gen Zs have you come across that would genuinely say, I don't even know how to walk up to a woman? I don't know how to pursue a woman. I'm not used to that. Some of them would even say, Oh, I'm used to girls walking up to me. Hmm. Insane. But what happened uh, to your insane. Natural, what happened to your natural instinct? Is that gone now? Do are men just choosing not to walk up to women? Is that a thing? Kind of a thing. Kind of a thing. Fear is real. Mental health is real. The anxiety of trying to approach someone is real. But I feel like the problem also might not. Well, I will say that millennials have laid the playing ground. Okay. You've you've set the course of like you set the canvas for which this art or this painting is gonna progress right now. Yeah. So that's where I can hear where like yeah, if you see all these dating apps, these dating apps are created by the generation literally just before you, yeah, which was already throwing away the rituals of of what's it courtship, Zo- courtships of Z- not zoomers, boot not boomers, zoomers I think they go not zoomers. What year are we talking? Are we talking before millennials? Generation X, that's what I mean. Okay, yeah, before millennials, Generation X, because Generation X had their own ways of doing things. Not that they're great, hell, yeah. you know, ugh. but. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say for the kiddos, I feel like it's very much a case of information overload playing around with how people can just be themselves, potentially. So if I say millennials ruin dating for Gen Z, mm. how do you feel? I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like social media did that. I feel like so there's too much... in inf- social media creators, social media app creators? It's like a yes and a no. Okay. I say yeah, the app creators, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, they're not really. There's a reason why TikTok is gonna be banned in America soon. Until they, <sighs> unless they sell off a certain amount of shares to an American company, there's a reason, and that's because of the image, the 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 image or the archetypes that are being projected on that app to young people mm-hmm. are make are unfortunately curating their behavior. So it's making their behavior go in one direction, or it's making them fearful. And okay. both of our very legitimate feelings to have, I just wouldn't blame it on a group because everyone's different. Everyone's just different. And everyone's scared. And sc- and fear makes people do very crazy things, like being scared to interact and have a dating culture in your life, potentially. Okay. <laughs> so what for me, growing up in London, it's like, okay, the dating culture, from what I could see, was people were very confident there were people that were either very confident to approach women mm. or people that were used to being approached. Okay. Now I think it's a point where people are just scared to get in relationships because they're already planning for it to end. They're planning for it to end. They're planning for, they're waiting for their, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what happened to me story for TikTok. They're just waiting for their disaster because okay. when all you do is go onto an app and it says, oh my gosh, I went on a date on Bumble and this is why you don't use Bumble. Oh, Hinge is unhinged. <laughs> I'll tell you why in <laughs> these next bits and shorts. like mm. It's content for us to see bad relationships, but it's hard to separate that this is online and this is real life. It takes a while. Like, that's how there was literally a documentary about an incel who he had his perception of what going outside was after therapy thank god for them just for providing that therapy at that point in time um at one point in the documentary near the end they were outside they were just talking outside a bar and a group of girls that were sitting heard the conversation going on it's on channel four if y'all want to check out and um they were just like i found it very interesting what you're talking about and i just feel like i feel like it's sad that you feel like that because i just feel like people aren't overthinking it as much in the in when you're outside yeah there's no need to overthink it but when you're online a lot 
there's people that say crazy stuff online. There's people that feel crazy stuff online. Why? The anonymity. It makes you feel emboldened and stronger. Plus, there's other crazy people that might have the strongest opinion in the world. Sorry, that, might be me. that was you. I apologize. They cool. might have the strongest opinion in the world. And that might fit, like, the part of you that says the quiet part out loud, do you know? <laughs> and then if you hear enough people saying the quiet like, part out loud, you won't learn the social grooming techniques mm -hmm. that come with being outside and alive. So a lot of the crazy stuff that make some boys or girls fear the other fair sex or the same sex, you know, do what you like, it's your business. Mm -hmm. um, that might be just a catalogue. That might just be a reference from online. Mm. Like, it might happen in real life. It might, but it might not. But that's the thing. So social media apps right now, when it comes to dating, there's a lot of fear mongering going on because people are just so quick to tell their story. So it's like, are people even planning content when it comes to their dating life? Like, you know what? If the inevitable happens Kinda. and this goes wrong, at least I can talk about online because <laughs> some people just strive to be interesting to people online oh as opposed to actually... Lord fixing their life like how's my career going how's my relationships going in life got a point but you know as long as i'm appealing and seem interesting on social media mm -hmm. i'm doing well like there's people that are satisfied with doing well online that like, your perception true. of me means more to me than whatever's going on in real life because that's what helps me sleep at night because you'll f find people genuinely stressed mm. on people's perception of them that they've never met true that's very true like proper affecting them mm -hmm. But so it makes you think, what current affairs are we in right now? We're in a state of affairs where, like, online definitely is guiding Gen Z's feelings about themselves, about what they want to do. How I am a quote-unquote zillennial, because um, I'm part of that 96 gang, that weird spot that they don't mm. know where to put us. So zillennial is what some of us call it. Um, where it's like, I'm still part of that timeline of the time of the creators that's like, oh, cyberbullying, turn, turn the computer off. Like, <laughs> which is not nice because there's yeah. a generation of people that were literally born with it switched on right in front of their face whereas i was born with a big old computer with a back off that you have to switch on and switch off that's that's that sound of it booting up is like a plane leaving london city airport it's not funny <laughs> like but these lot it's such a little click and mm -hmm. all these no man was supposed to in taking all these information in the words of kanye <laughs> no one man should have all this power for real and information is power you are not that you're not wrong i see that linkage there mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. come on but yeah Rupert murdoch the tr <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> but deep it the, the the man in yorkshire was not supposed to know what was going on in indonesia it's a lot yeah it's a lot of information yeah and of course it's gonna like we would hope that it would desensitize people but because <laughs> but deep it like, it's like it's an overload it's an overload but like you know how like the earthquake happened in Germany and the woman was like, oh my gosh, a whole earthquake happened. You wouldn't think this would happen here. This is something that happens in like Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And people were just like, this, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very Kelly, Kelly Osborne, like, who will clean your toilets? I was like, mm. Mm -hmm. So you look at these kids and it's like, the reason they can't desensitize from the idea of this because dating is so real. It's not the thing that's happening over there. It could happen to me. It could just happen to me. Ah, so hearing the stories online mm -hmm. is... Is what's messing them up because it really could happen. It to them. really, I could be that guy that put my heart into this girl, and we went to a concert, and she danced upon the artist. Okay, so since we're talking <laughs> about dating, yeah, <laughs> what's your opinion on soft launches? You know, soft launches where you kind of let people know you've got a partner, but mm. you don't show the partner. So you might be at the dinner table mm -hmm. and show a young hand or an arm or the back of the head. Are we on? Are we for soft launches? Yes or no? think it's for the person to the side i say that i see how you're whispering even more you know why i say that because <laughs> i just fam. i just believe in doing what you like i don't really like soft launching i personally feel like just launch or don't because oh, really because it's weird to me like why are you like i saw this thing where they said oh people of other races they don't not show their partners only we do that and then they went on to some other rubbish about how the black race is prolifically based on like side chicks and cheating and i was like no yeah. this is insane yeah this is crazy what about the queen of this dolly parton we ain't seen her man's face for nothing yeah. and she is having a lovely peaceful life i don't see gladys's nights man all over the place i don't see patty labelle's man all over the place it's just a matter of character and the people and also timelines because back in the day the woman didn't have to have her man showboating with her she mm. showed up to the award night looking great. That was her job to no. do. Gladys didn't bring her man out there with her. 
Yeah. Or Patty. But there's all this pressure to look like such a perfect curated piece of art. Yeah. The relationship, the image. Relationship goal. Everything. And it's a lot of pressure for both parties because mm, respectfully, mm-hmm. how can these young men reach the goal of these unfortunate sickos that are also talking to the girls they like? Ah, so you think soft launching is for people that want to have one toe, one foot in, one foot out in a relationship? I feel so. I feel like don't post at all or post with your heart's content. So posting with heart's content, we're talking full on face. Put the face in there if you want to or don't. Unless your yeah. partner is a part of how you make your money, not in a wicked way. Yeah, and I talk about If your man is a part of your brand, he's a part of your brand. Fair enough. Okay. But if being not booed, if you, okay, for me, if you're not showing your booze face, I just feel like then he's not a part of the brand then. Just leave it out. Unless you're saying a part of your brand is, oh, inconspicuous dating. Ooh, like, okay, that's it. Is yeah. that a part of your brand? Are you telling me that there's something that could be released one day that we could never know because. Is that your niche? Like, it's looking very, don't look at me, but look at me. So it's like... Oh, so soft launching is what a young attention-seeking, but, like, uh, low-key. A little bit. Low-key, high-key attention-seeking. High-key, low-key, because it's trying to be like, I'm not seeking attention. I didn't put in things, and I didn't put a bunch of hearts on it. You didn't have to do that. You just you just had to put <laughs> everything around you guys and just show a limb. And yeah. now we're supposed to be excited about limbs on yeah. the timeline. And it looks like someone's a hater. But I don't deny that people say, what if I still want to enjoy myself? What if this person has security issues? But I know I'm online a lot. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, I said don't mean a damn thing then. Yeah. But for me, it just looks like if this is a part of your brand, make it a part of your brand. If it's not, then keep this out of the content so I know what you're selling me. Because that's what your timeline is. You're selling me something eventually. Uh... So what are we selling? A course? Workout plan? What are we getting next? Like, not in the rude way. No, no, it's facts because now I think about Britney. At, yeah. What's her name? Britney Renner? <laughs> Britney, yeah, yeah. She's selling me something. Yeah. Part of the brand is she looks desirable. Hey, this is who I'm able to attract. Like this guy. Yeah, it didn't want to stay with you for some reason. Mm. <laughs> so good. Very rude. Very rude. This is hate. But, but no, it's like Instagram pages now are like the CVs. They are the. Instagram pages yeah. are like the trendy person's LinkedIn. Yeah. Because LinkedIn can be a bit too formal. Yeah. But if you really want to have a bite-sized version of, hey, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, come on over to my Instagram page. That's my CV. I hear Let's it. Let's just say in the creative industry. Yeah. And if it's not creative-wise and it's more like my personal life, yeah, this is how I'm living. Because, you know, now people do like, you can get a peep of my settings of how I live. Mm. this is what i'm able to afford to do when it comes to lifestyle this is my partner or the parts of my partner that i want to show you Mm -hmm. so it's a little bit insight but obviously it's up to that person how much i want to see of you Figgy facts Figgy facts so now i'm just agreeing with how you (laughs) the way you were packaging it was just better than me i just i just sounded like danny devito Talking to Hercules and did like in the, um, the Disney Channel film where it's just like listen here, kid. Yeah, yeah, you're like telling me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's just what it is right now. I feel I feel I feel bad for the current state of affairs when it comes to dating because there is so much fear in it. There's so much so fear. Much of, before you even get in a relationship, people are already fearful of how it's gonna fail or how bad it's gonna be. Like how bad is this failure gonna be this time? Or mm-hmm. you know what, I don't really have the capacity in my heart to fail again. True. So true, you already true. kind of set yourself up for maybe it's safer if I just don't get in a relationship. True. You know what? We're being negative, low key. There's also the other aspect of it of the overly optimistic people, oh, in the sense heart of heart on their sleeves. Heart on their sleeves. The the Christian mingles or like the oh I went to a neurodivergent um date night give me strength type of people that like, I was just so excited because they're all just like me. So I was hoping for more. And then we have the story of like. The autistic girl with the autistic boy and an autistic girl deeps. Okay, no, this is too much. An autistic boy is like, rah, I'm rejected from my own autistic girl. What the hell? This mm. is a example. A no, I'm, <laughs> sorry, I'm just saying, like, these char- these people with these conditions, it could be hard being in the same room and feeling like, this is the time for me to find that love. Okay. Then the feeling of rejection in this space. So there's even optimistic people who go out into the spaces to make the effort or go online to look for ways to find people men and women i mean there's a reason why the trad wives section exists because those are for the optimistic people who think if i just do some more i may get some more yeah in opposed to the people that's like i went on this date and it was nothing get your cats get your house be happy by yourself 
Yeah. They all these are all valid opinions. It's just scaring everybody because there's the guys that do the same for the boys, as you know. But that's a whole other place to go. Why do you think rejections, like the fear of rejection, is on the all time high right now? <sighs> because there's not a lot of places to win in life. Oof. It's the damn truth. When you don't have school and you don't have work, you don't have car, you don't have yard, yeah. you, don't, you don't have the clothes you want. If you don't have a lot of things, the one thing people can say, at least I have my relationship. Yeah. I have my man and we're working towards something called marriage or my man says, I got my girl. She hold me down. But of course, as both parties get richer or better looking, they start considering, what, what else do I really want? Because now it's like, what else can I get? But when people covet the relationship, it's because the world around them has left them down, lonely. Independence is not viable as much or it's not easy to attain or get like it was. Like the 80s was a great time. 90s, great time. Early 2000s, great time before 2007. For dating. For dating because people could just take the risk and keep it pushing. Uh, And you know with COVID as well, a lot of social establishments shut down. Affordable and cool ones. Affordable and cool establishments that shut down. So people have less places to actually socialise in third real spaces. life. No third spaces. That third space in life. So you have your workspace. These are places that you'll be in all the time. But okay. that third space to just actually chill. So like... See so your f- recreational space. That's it, like friends. Central Perk is their third space. Okay. But they have their workplace and then they have their apartments. But mm-hmm. their third space is really central perk we don't yeah. live in a world where people can have a regular central perk that them and their friends go to unless you're in sixth form it's true and my <laughs> thing is that if you're outside of london I understand but when you're living in a city like a modern day city mm. why wouldn't you have recreational places or you know traditionally social places stay open till later so people actually have a chance to socialize considering mm. everyone's talking about oh loneliness is on a high people are alone people aren't <laughs> mating anymore with people and stuff like that well well, keep the places open. In London, places are co- closing up at ridiculous... Pl- you can have places close up at like 7 o'clock. You go into central London, far and few that close maybe... And this is even the weekend. On the weekend, we're talking. Maybe midnight. Maybe. But weekday, right. 10, 11. 11 yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But London... That's disappointing. Well, we don't have a like nightlife anymore. We've ruined it. Oh, yeah. oh, there's no nightlife in London, you know. Oh, yeah, that's another thing that someone discussed. Because of the way nightlife is, back in the day, the way it works best, especially throughout the 80s and 90s, as I was told by the the Gen X and boomers I know, is that it's affordable. You pay a little fiver down at the the entry or less. Mm-hmm. You get oh, you get in, there's banging tunes throughout the night cheap drinks for the girls and you just go every weekend let loose after having a long day nine to five and it's affordable to do that regularly and eventually you find your lady you don't poison your lady you don't spike your lady no, no <laughs> you don't, it's true. like some people's stories of how they met does sound like that but i don't think that's everyone or else like we wouldn't all be here and no, of course you know what i mean and unless it's the 60s and i can't say yeah it happened for sure <laughs> No, no, obviously that's not a laughing matter when it comes to like spiking and stuff like oh, that. Oh, hell no. No, of course. But that's a really good point that you brought up because th- this is the cost of living coming back again. Mm. Affordability, not just for paying bills. Because I think like when people say cost of living, immediately you think of, oh, how do I pay my bills? But yep. no, your, your lifestyle. Oh, 100%. How do you enjoy yourself? Imagine a fiver to get into a club. A nice club apparently back in the Dizzy. And then the likelihood of you meeting someone's going to be a lot higher if you are going out four times a month. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you ask someone any plans tonight, they're like, I'm tired. Tired. Like, people don't go out mm-hmm. anymore because they're genuinely tired, because they're overworked, yep. they're spent. Yep. And because the cost of living is so high, even if you had, even if you ha- if, even, even if you had the energy, you, don't, you can't even afford to go out. Yeah. So no. it's safer for you to be in. And then it gets comfortable. Safer. Oh, you know, God. it's safer. It's safer. And then you got the convenience of, oh, you know, I've got Netflix. True. I've got all these streaming services that I was told I wouldn't need because, you know, <sighs> until they just all didn't bother being on your Skybox. So then you just pay for them. And then now it's like you have the Skybox. It's crazy. Are we even going backwards now? Because no, if there was a time that you could literally get a Skybox or version box, 
just one satellite dish and you've got thousands of channels mm -hmm. and now we're paying for separate subscriptions from Netflix to Disney to Amazon. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're going backwards. Oh, we are. But, but they packaged is... it in a way where you feel like you're going forward. They tricked us so well. They tricked us so good. <laughs> they tricked us so fine. They made us feel like this is the best thing. And also look at all this original content we got that you can't get on your TV. The so original you content, yeah. have to change over. You just have to. Yeah. And especially when you get online FOMO because then everyone's talking about it. Mm. So you feel compelled to be like oh, let me just get the subscription it's only like a tenner guess who's launched theirs now who sony if you are a playstation owner they have their own sony streaming service i saw it coming it's embarrassing though because it's it's, it's they're even late to the party to no they're fair. late to the party but because they had a whole plan it's very clear what the plan was you see how this madden web thing just went a bit yeah well basically they're supposed to do a sony spider-man universe okay so because remember sony has um, um a licensing deal for spider-man and x-men that's what they own okay and disney can't, can't can't touch none of that stuff yeah so they were thinking okay cool 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 we're going to create this spider-man universe we're going to create a streaming service to bring people in with that universe we're about to create mm -hmm. now madam webb didn't go so great so god give me strength i was looking at the movie selections the movies that are actually included are like 97 films not a lot in the Sony catalog. And then they have others that you can purchase while watching on their service. 97's original content. Original Sony films, I'm guessing. Uh, They've had more films in their life. I know that. That's yeah. that's that's interesting. <laughs> but um Because isn't Paramount a subsidiary? So Par no, Paramount is its own thing. I've got Paramount oh, Plus. Okay. That's an in they they got a lot of stuff. They've, They've never collabed with Sony. But nope, Sony. I feel like there's been opening credits of films and I've seen the the, the, the woman with the light and the and the horse, the horses. Yeah, they they have their their deals. But they've linked up before. Linked, okay. Potentially, it's not a figment of some my might imagination. Have done filming, some might have done distribution. Who knows? Yeah, Who knows? I knew it wasn't a figment of my imagination. But um, yeah, they are joining the game too. But it's like an Amazon Prime thing where it just comes with your PlayStation Plus network subscription. I forget what it is. I have one, but hey, yeah, yeah. So sorry, back to the topic at hand of dating, and is it the millennials' fault? I say yes and no. I <laughs> say on the fence on this. You one. know why I say whose fault it is? Who? Les boomers. I will always blame the boomers. The boomers. Let me Google what time, what year boomers would have to be. I born. blame the boomers because they've made an an environment that is not uh, financially sustainable for the children to date and uh, socialize, which is very important. Okay. You know? I'm just checking baby boomers. Yeah, they're like. There's two types of boomers. There's boomers one and boomers two. Boomers one World War World War One birth timeline from okay. the thirties. Well, I've got baby boomers were born from approximately 1946 to 1964. A tidal wave of births created the approximately named baby boomer generation, as they literally represent a boom in the birth rate. So that's probably the first wave you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're saying we blame them? I do. But they were partnering up. They were the real. I'm here to fill a role romantic generation well, it's not about <laughs> templates it's not about examples of growing up and what you see in that you see that love and then you translate that stuff that all comes from people being selfish and voting selfishly throughout their time in life okay uh. when you don't allow everybody to have something or a little bit of something i ain't saying that you gotta take them from cradle to grave yeah but allow them to be able to make sustenance out of their life this is a group of people that will be able to work a summer job and pay off like their uni this is also a group of people if we're thinking in the uk context their school was for free so they were able to approach relationships with a calm mind then They're because they didn't have so responsibilities yeah like heavy ones anyway they weren't yeah. getting tricked into debt from early nope from like 16 years they old get council flats <laughs> 18 <laughs> They won't exactly won't get into, you won't sign in the craziest contract of your life at a point in your bright life where your brain ain't even that developed. Give me strength. Nope. Just sign them sh away. Yeah. And <laughs> and um yeah, how are you supposed to approach stuff calmly? Most people that do have the relationships were lucky enough to pin each other down in their say late teens, early twenties, mid twenties. Yeah. And even then, some people feel like, yeah, they were lucky they pinned me down. And <laughs> some people were like, Thank God I caught this life right after. <laughs> Don't know how I would have dated now. Like, I'm living off codependency and trauma-based bonding. <laughs> some what, for the boomers? No, I'm talking about some people in the millennial timeline to Gen Z. Oh, okay. They, yeah. and Gen X, definitely. Gen X. Whoa. If you were, like, Gen X and, you're, and you Try were in the it. 2007 timeline as an adult, 
and your stuff started breaking down because the millennials say you coming out of uni going oh, i feel i feel like you're about to go to like first um recession the first that, 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 well our yeah. first generation recession that's the first re- recession we live through there's okay. people that live through 80s recession <laughs> yeah we've just lived through 2008 onwards okay <laughs> or so seven onwards <laughs> I want to I wanna pick your brain about this, yeah? Go on, then. Go on. Because you already know about it, because I told you about it, but... Okay. The date me docs. So this is a Ooh, thing where people yes. have created docs, and they've linked it to the social media pages where you can click it, and they're telling you about themselves, what they're looking for in a partner, what they don't want. It seems very efficient. It's efficient, but it's also a safety risk. Um I just feel like saying so much about yourself in a world where people are trying to steal your data and identity is insane to just give so much away. But because you're, I sound like a bird, <laughs> but since your priority is mating, mm-hmm. please give out all your details. Do do that. That's your priority is dating, not your safety of detail. You just said two things. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's mad to me. Yeah. But good luck. <laughs> I don't want someone to not do what they want. This You do not want to tell a person not to do what they want because if it goes well they told me no see all the articles of them saying hey do this thing i did that's going against the norms see how it changed my life great or it goes the other way and i'd rather just be like it's a shame they're there it's good that you tell your story so people don't do this too (laughs) so that's all you can get from this hey hey i can't believe this i'm talking yeah i'm talking to you over there You've been sat here watching, <laughs> listening, even drinking maybe out of your own hey sis mug. My only issue is you ain't dropped a comment. You ain't liked. And ugh, I don't even want to believe it. You might not have even subscribed. Can you imagine that? Please? Such gross behaviour. Egregious, some would say. Absolutely egregious. I mean, it is absolutely egregious. I'm going to give you some time to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that's enough time. Enough time. Let's get back to the episode. Come on the date me docs Go on. so this is a thing on social media pages where people are creating documents linking it to their bio as in this is what it takes to date me this is what i'm into this is what i'm not into what's good it's like real quick and bite-sized well i feel like it's a security risk personally like you're giving out so much information about yourself so much details especially in this world where like people are literally paying for your data so to give so much away for free it's, it's a bit mad but at the same time if you know that the number one thing you want to do with your time is seeking a partner then this is a worthwhile risk to take and i wish you all the best luck in this endeavor <laughs> so okay yeah. it's a big big cyber risk like yeah, it's a cyber, risk. cyber security <laughs> risk so, so, very big risk <laughs> well you're like if that's if that's what you're into if that's what you want if you feel like this is the best way to find your so you might, at this point you're thinking it's soulmates you have to think in soulmates if you're putting a whole google doc on your social media yeah it, you can't just think oh we're just jigsaw puzzles we find each other and we'll see how it works out you believe in soulmates and blessed be unto you i just think it may come across as risky and potentially maybe a lot but anybody who would respond to it probably is good or bad literally <laughs> okay i'm gonna throw some gen z facts to you yeah? these are stats stats okay let's get statistical baby because I'm, I'm i'm curious about what the streets are saying dating wise for gen z okay. so gen z 70 oh. <laughs> percent <laughs> yo the lucas a just kicked in and i'm just like i'm in a glitch so 75 percent of gen z's are single Okay. Gen Zers are having less casual sex than before, while thirty eight percent of young adults had casual sex in like the early mid mid two thousands. Mm-hmm. This has now dropped by twenty four percent. Okay. The majority of Gen Z daters believe in splitting the costs of dating, while twenty eight percent are willing to spend at least a hundred dollars on the first date, and one out of three spends two hundred and fifty dollars or more per month on dating okay so overall can you see some truth into that do you feel like i see it maybe or maybe. Nah? well how many gen z uh, gen z's actually do like surveys without getting paid like like where's this census from where is this consensus of who is this um group of people um okay. the first one's on the bbc where 75 percent of gen z's are single 
from the BBC, 37% of the 30, 30, how many percent? 70, 75% of Gen Zs are single. Are this a heteronormative group? Because like, yeah. so heteronormative, so these are straight Hetero- relationships. Yes, it's not that complex. I'm just trying to see if we've got the whole scope of the nation because some groups may not have a problem that other groups are having. Okay. So if we're looking from a heteronormative perspective, I can understand why there might be a decrease in um, casual sex. Yeah. Also, um, and then link between that and the dating date. apps. Yeah. Oh, the link in that between date culture of yeah. everybody wants to do fitty fitty in this timeline. Um, <laughs> no, but it's a hey, one thing that has been amazing about liberation and everybody having an opinion is that now we can all say, okay, I want to do fifty fifty. But you know what that means? It's amazing for a lot of women because a lot of women were sucked into this unfortunate scenario where he paid for dinner, I guess, and he's going to force me to do something, I guess. And now I'll 50 it. We'll pay. If you want to insist that you'll pay, that's great. But I will insist to tell you I owe you nothing, sir. And then we go our own way. But before, it's a sad thing to say, but it seems as though a woman was worth a dinner. And now, thanks to self-esteem and just get up and go to work and make your own goddamn money, I am not worth a dinner. So, if it means that for the price of maybe £30, £40 for my own stuff, I can say I didn't have to let someone touch me, I didn't want to touch me, that's great. Some people don't have to go on that day if they think, how dare I pay? Even but I sit at home. <laughs> You're extra safe. Stay at home tonight. Yeah. And then the guy who can afford to take you out will do that. Yeah. So anybody who wants to play at their own play, everybody knows the strategy to feel safe. So if mm-hmm. 50-50 is how it's going to be, then no one has to now feel choked or strangled or forced to do something they don't want to do. So it's less inclined. It's less implied. <laughs> so it's okay, great. Okay, because I was going to ask you, do you feel like a lot of people that go 50-50 are the ones that know that they can't really say no if something's implied. Maybe it could be a control issue or a strength issue or whatever because I don't see it like you're being weak. Some people yeah. know the rules they can uphold for themselves to feel safe. Yeah. So so it's a boundary. It's a boundary. Some people may feel like, oh, you can pay, but I ain't going to give a damn. I ain't going to do this, that, or that. If you try and embarrass me here, I'm going to insult you, player. You ain't going to... That's great. Some people... You do not know their ability to take on stress. <laughs> Some people don't yeah. like stress. Some people don't like embarrassment in public. Some people don't have the energy. But yeah. what they do have is their money. And they will pay for no embarrassment or shame. So yeah. you're not going to... It's okay. Eh, I'm out. Yeah. You know, Some people's like, let's discuss this beforehand. Cool. So some people paying 50-50 is for their own peace of mind. Yeah. Well, that's, that is a narrative. Some will say, well, for me, those girls are cheap. For me, those girls don't know their... Right. That's an opinion. Uh, so it's immaterial if people get the results they want in this life that's not material your opinion isn't material <laughs> no that is true i mean you're the one that told me that two truths can exist at the same time oh, as can. well it can like you can be telling these guys how dare you but some people can say you look like a bum <laughs> so it's it's perspective okay it's perspective well i've got some more statistics for you go on give it to me why not i, I want i really want to know what you think of this okay mm. Over 70% of young singles prefer a phone call before meeting up for the first time. I hear it ish. But my I thing is know. but my thing is, wouldn't you naturally speak to someone a few times, get a feel for them? Because apparently some people are just literally going from dating app to first date. But you see that little bit in between. I'm gonna need a couple phone calls to get a gist of your personality. Cause we can save ourselves the first date. I feel like what's wrong with a young like FaceTime or Skype, like, because for me, yeah. call me weird. Once upon a time, when I used to be a single person who talked online, um, you could go from Tumblr to Tumblr Messenger to what's it, Skype, and okay. that was a natural progression potentially, and stuff like that. Um, and you'd see their face, you'll know like if I would want like you get a clear way. So the idea that just the app and then there, I kind of get it. But, like, what's your out? How do you get out of this? Because, like, mm. I've always felt scared about, like, that whole um, blind date thing of, oh, we both wear, now I'm going to sound old saying this, we both wear, like, a red rose on us and 
if I see your rose, I'll meet you <laughs> at that that's, place. That's and older than you. I know that's way older than me. That's how you can tell <laughs> the people who taught me this concept. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless Reedy. Uh, but like, yeah, you'll you'll put something in the what's it the what's it the personals. Yeah, so I've seen someone with a. Oh, they still do cute, that. It's called um. They have like Seeking? a segment for it, but you, when people it's people you see on the tube. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, they, they still got it. the personals in the metro. Yeah. Oh, cute. Oh, yeah. those are for the nine of fivers. Come on now. Basically. They got that. It's not always on the apps, people. It can be in print, okay? Living testimony. People of are that. finding love in print. Come on. Come so what? <laughs> oh, but that's the thing, okay. So are we missing a natural progression in relationships? That whole going from, okay, meeting the first time, talking over the phone, mm. getting a gist for each other, and then going on the first date. Like, are people just skipping a lot of steps now? And but that's why things are just crashing and burning anyhow. It's not that they're skipping steps. These are technically new steps. These are steps that kind of developed in like the 90s to the 2000s, this online oh, space yeah. thing. These are new steps. Old steps was, I met you in person. Or I saw you a lot. Linked up. Our family's linked up, or I've met you in person at work, or whatever this third space in our area, church, the market, the butchers. Yeah. We see each other regularly, 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 regularly. Then eventually there's like a barnyard party or like a, a, um, a village fete. And eventually we meet as we're playing like jumping sacks and stuff <laughs> all around the Mary Pole. Yeah. And that's how we, we would find our lover. But no, no such thing now. I like the country accent. <laughs> Very nice. You're right, my lover. My lover. To all our Bristolians, hi. Um, <laughs> uh, Skins was a good show. But essentially, um, I think that this is technically a new phenomenon. We have not seen a world where it was based off of just correspondence first like that. But except for like maybe if you're like a love torn lovers and you're being arranged marriage and you're just writing letters so you meet each other yeah, and that's because of distance that's distance and yeah. even then who's marrying a girl that far in them days when there's enough local village things why <laughs> why would i do this i hear that so then the internet is the reason why dating got more complex than it needed too to too much options because people started adding steps to the whole process of dating and now people's brains are in like six different directions and then when a relationship ends you're like i don't even know why we broke up essentially but also i don't even know why i ended up here i thought i was secure happy safe person and now i'm just in this relationship i never expected no how honest were you with you how honest were you with yourself because some people say i want fun then you get into something that you deep i didn't want fun and some people say i want fun then i did i actually want a serious life look at me i'm a fool and it's because the apps give you too many options when all you just need to do is be around people and then figure th things out but people another thing that's wrong with dating is people have too many intentions they come in with too many like you have your own plan already coming into this ah uh, so we should just take in what's in front of us as opposed to coming with all these preconceived goals and aspirations and expectations i have one term tabula rasa oh, oh my gosh i sound like fraser <laughs> tabula rasa niles tabula rasa being the term of a blank slate <laughs> yes in latin <laughs> Oh, is that what it is? Tabula Raza. I'll Google this. No, honestly, look it up. Tabula Raza. Tabula, tabula Raza. And um, Tabula Raza meaning that if we could not look at a guy and see our future husband, this is me speaking heteronormative people, if we could not look at a guy and just see a husband in a place, like as a placeholder or a blank tablet, Tabula Raza. So like tablet eraser, essentially. Um, or we don't just look at a girl and see our bang maid or our woman that will just procreate with us or whatever utility, whatever utility that's at the forefront of your brain, whether it's the party of the wedding, whether it's the pride in the ring, I don't know what it is. Or the soft launch. The soft launch. Just get rid of it. Just get, take that away. Just be nice. Just be friends. Just come with a clear mind. Women too, not just men. Because people say, yeah, men, I hate when men just go to space. It's like, there's a whole Reddit dedicated to, how do you find that perfect, like, pixie girl archetype? Oh, yeah, go to the manga shops. Go to this shop to get that girl. I'm like, you're tapped. This is hunting. This is weird. It's like I'm saying, well, fox season is down in Yorkshire at this time again. No. It's very purposeful breeding, very isn't it? Pu and there's all the women that they say, hang out in the hotel lobbies. All the rich men come down at four o'clock for afternoon tea. No, they don't. <laughs> you will not find them there. Well, it, some people do do positioning there. Positioning is a real tactic for people who can have members in the club members club mem members club memberships yeah for places where they undoubtedly will talk to someone and you can undoubtedly be in that space regularly yeah. i mean it's like 
the film with Marilyn Monroe in it, How to Marry a Billionaire, those girls were positioned. I mean, that house was empty, but that apartment, the apartment they stayed in was in like Fifth Avenue. Amazing. Talk to all the guys, walk them up to the door, say, oh, I got to go to my apartment. You live in a really nice place, they'd say to the girls. Oh, thank you. They'll go in there, there's nothing. Nothing inside. Tins, tin, <laughs> fish tins is what they're eating with their cats. <laughs> I need to watch this film. No, you do. It's actually really good. It's a really classic, it. isn't it's it? It's a classic. Oof. Classic. Marilyn doing some good work. But it is the idea that I do believe in positioning being true, not just because it was in the movie. Like, there's enough sugaring forums to look at where positioning is true. Yeah. Oh, hello. But I would say that um, it's not for everybody. Everybody thinks they can do this, but it's not for everyone. That's what I'm going to say. I do tell. My days, the sugar in forums are upset. I know. Because there's a lot of girlies that um, are jumping into this thing like, oh, I can be a sugar baby. I want to do this. And then they deep, you don't have the stamina, the energy or the bravado for this game. And then oh. it's leaving a lot of sugar daddies angry saying, oh, there's just a lot of sh- fake sugar babies. The sugar baby saying there's not a lot of sh- serious sugar daddies because there's a lot of sugar daddies who are not serious splendor daddies. Like there's guys that sell courses and videos teaching you how to s- basically get a fr- an fwb relationship out of basically how do you make um a sugar baby your girlfriend it's weird so how do you go from payment to friends with benefits to a real relationship oh is it but is it ideally like the overall goal is to goal is to avoid paying them avoid paying them and trick them into a relationship long term and i was like you were never serious about this you weren't real baby girl and that's why you shouldn't touch this game unless you want to do the research do okay. the research watch the so videos it's a different it's you have to have a certain mindset to be a sugar baby a sugar baby and you have to have a certain mindset to be a sugar daddy because no real sugar daddy would ever think about um not paying for something because yeah. the whole point is to engage mind you they're like oh there's a lot of girls that just come for the first free meal and bugger off and that's not why i want to really that's fine but hey you have to kiss a couple frogs whether it's that's paying for a couple of dinners mm. to figure out who your real sugar baby is going to be who will respect your boundaries not ruin your life or you can, you know, just find anything and see how that goes wrong with sleeping with anyone from work and just paying on them for whatever. Not saying that people should commit adultery. God, no. Please, no. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't, I just, oh, God. But, um, <laughs> yeah, sugar daddies, have your wallets ready and have a conversation. See what you're ready to pay for. These men really enjoy paying for these girls' futures, some of these guys. And they yeah. also hate... Well, like, education-wise and education stuff. Education-wise. I know you have... They hate prostitutes. Not hate prostitutes. But basically, um, there's an issue with a lot of prostitutes going on these apps. Not actual sugar babies. And they said, you can tell it's a prosy when they come with the, hey, hun. <laughs> or, or she's talking about the breakdown of prices too soon. Because it's like she's just assuming it's about sex. But it's a relationship where we go to dinner and hang out. And then we naturally get to that point. And I'm like, that's a long game. That's how I know I'm not built... I am southeast and uncouth. I want the invoice. Okay, so <laughs> it's given. I, I'm I'm trying to understand the difference. Yeah. Yeah. What is the difference between a prostitute and a sugar baby? <sighs> there's a lot. So there's prostitute. It's like oh, there's prostitute. There's escorts. There's sugar babies. So now sugar babies will have a long term relationship with a a gentleman or lady. Sugar mamas too. Come on now. Um, out here and basically they pay for your lifestyle while enduring a relationship with you it's kind of gigolo and stuff like that because the pro or escort e in the sense of like yeah we are connected but the thing is an escort you call me when you want me a sugar baby i'm on an allowance i'm in your rotation we have a relationship i talk with you you message me i message back mm-hmm. depending and i'm paid within the framework of this allowance however it's discussed some people like monetary things some people are actual money for an allowance that goes towards the things that help build them up and stuff like that and um sometimes ugh, there's a lot of scandal in this in community sometimes people say that they only try and dabble in sugar babying because they've got kicked out of the escort services and it's like god damn because there's no official yeah. sugar baby kind of thing anymore except for seeking arrangements or something but yeah like i said apparently a lot of punks are on there not being serious check out reddit it's all their people <laughs> damn yeah so Escorts is more like hourly, like prostitutes. And sugar ah, baby. Well, 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 pros- but, but, yeah. <laughs> per, 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 Prost- per the minute. Per, prostitutes are per the minute to the hour. <laughs> per the minute to the hour. Escorts are per per the night. Uh, so let's say it's an event. Sh- shift. Shift per, work. Shift work, event work. It's very. Sp- like, I want you for yeah. this amount of time. Half day, full day, right? Yeah, I want you to sit with me at this event. I want you to be at this, and then we go somewhere else. And it's not a guarantee with a happy ending. That's, it's not guaranteed, but it may like be escort. implied. It's, I feel like escort is implied. Okay. And Heavily sh- implied. Yeah. Like and the sugar babies are a retainer. 
They're on a retainer. We're on a retainer. We could be a fi- it's a fixed term contract. Fixed term. It could be a year, two years. Same it could be place, six months. Same term. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Lordy. But all of them technically end in the same way. Essentially. Happy endings? Essentially. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Everyone's happy. Allegedly. Allegedly. I'm not saying specifically what happened. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. At the end of the day, everyone's happy. Okay. Facts. That, that is we a hope. very diplomatic way of putting it. It's a service. <laughs> and they are service providers. Service providers, cu- consumers, clientele. Everyone's involved here. You just got the whole thesaurus with you today. I ain't gonna lie. Are you sure you don't want to get into PR? But they're patrons. <laughs> They are merely patrons of this mere tavern. How the hell did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> but let's take it back to dating. Yeah. Because actually it did link to dating because there are guys literally teaching guys how to start a sugar relationship just to turn it into a dating relationship. Which so I buying want... a girlfriend, you could have done that in the first instance. What like, the... There's plenty of girls that are with man that literally because, you know, the money. No. I don't want to do it the way that it just is. I want to not feel like that. Literally, guys, so it just feels dirty. But it feels like if we meet like this, I can maybe break down certain walls. It's all dirty. Let's just put it that way. Because you're not even here for the business. <laughs> you're here to distract. But whoa. <laughs> okay. Another frustration that they're having with dating is mm-hmm. that they said that the algorithms aren't matching people up accordingly yeah, nowadays. You do make money from ensuring that people keep using your app. Also, people have to talk about the ghost accounts. There's a lot of fake accounts on there. And there's a lot of setups where women don't pay, men pay, and then you're getting told, oh, there's someone that you could really match with, but you have to pay premium. But this could just be a fake account. Hell, this could be a dormant account of someone who used to use it because... You don't deep it. You've given your data. You've given your information. They can use it how they want on the site to present you to potential matches like they said they would. Yeah, you so, sign off on that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we're living in a situation where there's fake accounts, there's ghost accounts, there's there's the algorithm not matching you up purposefully, on pur- like not matching you up properly on yeah. purpose. Like, sad. So in a nutshell, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dating apps may seem like they're here to help with yeah. the whole, oh, we feel so sorry for you for the fact that you can't meet anyone to date. Here's a dating app to help you. Mm-hmm. But essentially, it's just a business. And like any yeah. other business, the aim is to make sure that you're a returning customer. Returning so, customer and data collection. And data collection, because data is expensive currency. Expensive. Expensive currency. You so, know. Gen Z should just be out here in a real life meeting people in person then. Yeah. To avoid being a sucker for businesses, isn't it? Yeah, a, a bit, a bit, because they could be made sucker, but they should. It all starts with therapy, children. <laughs> Get past your fears, because mm-hmm. they're not really whatever you fear in the relationship, you're projecting from inside. Qualm that or settle that first, and then you'll be able to enter into dating and not take things so personally. Because remember, we're just a bunch of traumatized people just trying to say hello. You know? I mean, that sounds like the beginning of a book, man. Like a, a best-selling novel. Stop. No, no, no. That nah, it does. <laughs> I forgot. You know. That nah, it does. So, okay. Final takeaways in regards to did millennials ruin dating for Gen Z? I'm going to say this. The internet ruined it. Facts. With having a lot of access and sometimes too much options too much access and too much accessibility Mm. doesn't allow you to focus Mm. on things and really take people in Mm. and the fact that because of that access you've been exposed to choices and so many different images so now you've now got a preconceived image of your perfect person and technically you've mashed up six different people that you've seen online and now you believe that one person exists and i'm not saying that Mm. someone you like doesn't exist or the person that you want you shouldn't go after Mm. but be realistic actually go out in real life and see what's out there as opposed to like Mm -hmm. you said there might be some dormant accounts there might be some ai profiles for all you know and you're and now you're chasing an image that doesn't even will never materialize and then anything yeah and um yeah like i said i've always encouraged people to go out in social settings and it's even good for your social skills man brush up on that meet people get a feel learn social cues that is a very very key thing <laughs> even with friendships work you name it so yeah gen z get out on these streets what's your final takeaway in regards to gen z and dating 
final takeaway is just be yourself not all the way yourself some people do need to change but um just don't make the mistake um us millennials made slash millennials made where we had all these films like 27 dresses and um 13 going on 30 all these little silly films that make you think oh my gosh this is how love's gonna be i'm gonna be running through new york or london in the main city and blah, 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 all that kind of rubbish we use those to damage our brains just how you guys are using like shorts on tiktok to damage your brains okay like the tv show ideal of love that ugly bitty stuff ain't happening <laughs> that sex in the city shit ain't happening sorry all that stuff on tv that we saw ain't happening and put that aside and focus on what do you want your own well-being and then eventually you it will just land on your lap have no intentions don't hunt for people hunting is bad <laughs> and just don't use imagery to guide your understanding of the world because it's not the world it's online yeah it's true guys man you have been listening to another episode of hey sis but before you go you need to make sure that you've liked subscribed mm. to this episode and don't be shy to drop a comment my audiobook hey i'm the big sis you never had is out right now on spotify exclusively it's just for sus- Ugh, it is for subscribers only subscribers only and with it being for subscribers only that's when you get the premium stuff and of for course me. we're going through a cost of living crisis I've made sure I've done the numbers. I've crunched it to a point where it's very affordable. And you have a good time. Listen to me on your way to work, on your way back from work. While you're getting your nails done, it's a definite good read. And it's basically, there's nothing basic about it though, but it's a lot of good advice through myself and other people to just make yourself a better person. It's the advice you wish you had years earlier. And I've put it in a condensed way where you can just take it all in and just grow. Uh, that's it really guys man can i yeah yeah she anything you want to say <laughs> subscribe boo. that's it <laughs> that's subscribe. it just subscribe and watch some old episodes you've been yes. listening or watching to another banging episode of hey sis stay blessed see and i want to get more of that tomorrow. i address any blow success lay down as you decompress come mind and forget the stress but the nine to five because he's trying to change his life yeah. he can't help it but to show his bad side so nah. tell me just see when he want that good ride Follow my stride, you know you want a good time Pick any card, I know it won't decline never. You know how to please me, never tease me Keep me in Givenchy, laced in Gucci Quick, take the keys and drive to Chelsea uh-huh. He is Galini, uh-huh. order Linguini He ordered the Chateau, we got it to go Then flew to the Chateau, you already know Friends telling me they see the glow There's no way they know, well I guess it shows That's the seed you sold, oh yes.